We all have heard of the U.S. Navy Tic Tac UFOs, and today we have the award-winning director, producer, writer, Caroline Corey on the show to talk about her latest award-winning documentary with a team of military personnel, scientists, and guess who? Captain Kirk, special guest William Shatner, attempts to recapture in real time the U.S. Navy Tic Tac UFOs using a state-of-the-art military-grade equipment and technology. And what they found, Caroline Corey is going to give us insight of all that information. So, I'm Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told, and please welcome back to the Truth Be Told studios, the one and only Caroline Corey. <laughs> We're twins! <laughs> I love that! I love that! You know, you look a little bit like Captain Kirk. Oh, well, thank you. you know? Yeah. At not, hopefully bit. when he was younger. not. I younger. was going to say in his young age. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm going to start off with that because that, it, talk about a get. You know, he's a legend, especially in our neck of the woods, um, 90 years old. I mean, first of all, how was it working with him? And how, how, did, how, how did you get his interest of being a part of this? Because... That's a really amazing get. He was a blast. Oh, my God. It was so, so fun to film him and just talk to him off camera, you know, in between takes and things like that. He's uh, very, very open. Like, he likes the mysteries of the universe. Uh, the film is really a scientific approach to the UFOs. And it, it almost didn't matter. I mean, he's not a scientist. We know who he right. is. He's a legend in the right. sci-fi world, <laughs> you know. So we didn't get him to to give us his scientific analysis. We wanted actually sort of a bridge. We wanted a personality that who would bridge the gap between what we were doing, which is a scientific approach, right. to the mainstream. And he's perfect. He represents exactly that. And, um, you know, the the scientists in the film and other scientists I've, in, I've encountered always tell me they get inspired from sci-fi and hmm. from watching shows like Star Trek, which is interesting, right? Right, right. Yeah. So so that's kind of why we we decided, even though we wanted to keep it very sciencey, to still have him uh, in that role. And I think he was amazing. Oh, I mean, from what I've seen, and I was telling you earlier, I'll be honest, I haven't finished it, but I'm going to watch it uh, this weekend, finish it. Uh, but, you know, he, he played a spaceship captain and an admiral, of course, but he finally got the chance to actually go into space recently. And, I, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine from what I've seen that it even changed his whole perspective on who we are and you know why we're here and maybe maybe why are we here even more but um what what was his take on Ness and i'm going to move on to the whole thing but you know it's captain kirk uh, yeah. <laughs> but what was his take on his thoughts about the project and ufos itself and extraterrestrials well, you know, he's actually a, a skeptic, you know, which is good. Because, yeah. yeah, which is yeah. which is good. It's a healthy skepticism. But so he knows it, there's something there, you know, but but he loves to to ponder like the, the mysterious, the mysteries of what it could be. He mm -hmm. doesn't really believe that we know anything, actually. He actually doesn't believe in science. Really? <laughs> he, well, I mean, like he he thinks that we just don't know enough. Yeah. So so always his take or his reaction or his um, kind of response is always about how mysterious the universe, how big, how much we just don't know. And so when I ask him specifically about UFOs, it's 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 the same thing. It's kind of within the context of. We just know so little. We see so little, you know. And so I told him, I said, that's exactly what we're doing. This is a very um, misunderstood, poorly understood phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, and no one's really covering it, bringing it real validation. I mean, right. the fact that the Pentagon and the Navy came out and said, yes, 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 th these are our, uh, it's real. Uh, we don't, but they still tell us we don't know what they are, you know. Right. 
Right. So, so I told him uh, that that's the reason why I wanted to approach the subject totally differently. Uh, I was going to team up with scientists and experts in the field and bring all sorts of technology. I mean, the mm. equipment that we had was crazy. Uh, we had, of course, the regular cameras, the night right, vision, right. The infrared, the spectrum analyzers, magnetometers, <laughs> the radiation detectors. I mean, the whole thing, which no one's ne never done. I've never seen that done before. And so when I told him that's the approach, he was very intrigued. But because no one's ever done anything like that, he was still kind of like, <laughs> is this going to work? Is this going to work? Right, right. <laughs> you know, and then, uh, of course, at the end, when we showed him what we found, he was he was he was pretty like mind blown. <laughs> well, how did you come up with the approach? Because, you know, we have ancient aliens and all these other shows out there that give a lot of theories. And, you know, because they said, you know, theorist, theorist, theory, theory. And when you bring science, you know, there's a lot of theory, but there's also a lot of bringing facts and and um technology that a lot of theorists don't have so how did you come up with the idea of bringing those all together because you have a team not just a, a scientist but a team of scientists um you know so how did you bring bring that together and how did you even how did you get that many people to agree to it <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, in you know, Tony, you saw my previous films oh, as yeah. well. So, I always try to bring uh, credibility to a paranormal subject to mm -hmm. make it normal. Right. And the way right. to do that is to bring science. And so, so for in the case of UFOs, because it's something in the sky, you know, we don't know how. It's not something that you can hold and put under a microscope. Right. So we really needed to have that amount of equipment and also to cover uh, the entire spectrum of physics. In other words, not just optical, but acoustic and radiation and this and that so that we get so much data on so many levels and, and get correlations in order to kind of determine, yes, this is anomalous, this means this, this means that. Because mm -hmm. if you're doing something scientific, you can't just look at one video, even even if it's even the, if there are many witnesses, right, the video itself by itself doesn't give you enough data. So in order to collect that much data, the equip the amount and the type of equipment was necessary, right? Uh, the scientific background uh, is necessary. Uh, and also, uh, the analysis, but also we needed to do something that also is very much missing um, in all the footage that you see out there, which is triangulation. Triangulation is when you capture an object, not just across multiple devices and technologies mm -hmm. and things like that, but from different angles. So oh, now okay. you have even yeah. more data <clears throat> as to what this anomalous event you know could be and so so what happened was i i was going to assemble the team from scratch and uh in my research when i was in pre-production i stumbled uh, first on kevin day mm -hmm. kevin day as you know was the radar person who captured the first uh, ufo the tic tac video right uh, ufo uh on the uss princeton in 2004 so he was the first one that I found. And when I spoke with him about the project, he said, oh, my God, Caroline, this is exactly what I've been wanting to do. <laughs> and, the, you know, and he said he already talked to a couple of scientists and he had a, 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 an, an incredible uh, engineer inventor who had all this equipment. So they ha he had been trying to make this happen for, I think, a couple of years. Oh, wow. And uh, and so so I thought, oh, well, since he already has those people, why don't we try to give it a try, you know, see if we can give it a try together. And that's how that team came about. Wow. Yeah. And I couldn't imagine, you know, like you said, trying to to certain scientists, because could you name a few of the scientists and and was there any skeptics or skeptical on joining your your project? 
because a lot of scientists, they, uh, you know, they they can be very fickle <laughs> on what they do and how to, how they express their their theories. Yeah. So the two main scientists who were on board were so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. She's like there. Just... <laughs> there is a but but that's what was that was a good thing because they were hardcore nuts and bolts scientists. And, and in the beginning, it was like, wait, I've, usually I work with scientists who are more open, you right. know, let's talk about entanglement, let's talk about wormhole, you know, and they were like, uh, no, sorry, this is going to be hardcore measurements and this and that. And then I, I mean, I thought, yes, that's the angle of this film, because that angle has never been done. You know, we have, right. we have some scientists who theorize. Uh, how the aliens could be getting here and things like that. But we don't have those types of measurement and measuring. So so, uh, so it was very interesting to have them on board do that work. But at the same time, you could not talk about consciousness or <laughs> summoning anything or anything right. like that. So, um, but it ended up being amazing because the data that they analyzed I mean, it's just, it's historic. I mean, we found things that uh, looked like the Tic Tac. We captured on video. It looks exactly like the Tic Tac traveling against the wind. We had stuff appear, tilt, rotate, and disappear. We had things literally coming down like a shower. Oh, my God. Wow. And of course, at the end, we have the big surprise. I mean, I'm going to say a little bit because it's in it's in the trailer. Right, right. And that's this wormhole thing, which is crazy. Now, I remember saying, is that the wormhole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you come up with the location um, for this shoot? Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so originally, as you know, there are a lot of hot spots around, you know, Area 51. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Sedona and... And so, but when I started working with the team and uh, Kevin Day, uh, him being on the ship, the USS Princeton, they were off of the coast of Catalina. Mm -hmm. And this is where they saw all these uh, Tic Tac objects come down. And then later in, I think, 2014, 17, you, you had the USS Omaha, the USS Kid also report similar things even i think the uss omaha was talking they were talking about swarms of tic tac like ufos around the ship so so of course like i was like okay it's not just one isolated case there's right. all these navy ships and direct witnesses all saying the same thing is it possible that we could go back to the same area and there's got to be something there and see what we we could capture I wasn't expecting to capture the exact same thing, you know, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, you know, what are the odds? Right. And so, um, yeah, I was blown away by what we ended up with. And I think, you know, there's a lot of locations. I remember growing up uh, in the small town in Kansas and there at, in the 70s, there were a lot of sightings of UFOs. In fact, like I said, you know, my mom, my sisters and my brother and I, we saw a UFO when I was a little kid. They were older and my mom, of course. Um, they remember it like it was yesterday, but um, but then it kind of just stopped. Like, mm. and so they haven't seen at least nobody either now because of technology. Their faces are down in the technology, or maybe I don't know. So they don't look up in the air. But um, you know, like you said, the hot spots that are off the coast of Southern California may have been a hot spot twenty years ago, thirty years ago, fifty years ago, but maybe not now. But did they did you find that that's you know i'm not trying to give it away but did you see a lot of activity still off the coast of california yeah exactly and so what happened is we did even some more research not just you know the navy guys right. being all in the same area but you could trace back to the 1960s and even before that certain things uh anomalous objects appearing in the skies and also underwater all mm. in the same area uh, until very recently. In fact, I'm not very far from this area where I am in Los Angeles, you know, mm. and there's still groups. I mean, we still meet, um, you know, in that vicinity, not not all the way down Catalina, but um, close enough 
to still see all kinds of things in the sky even now so so but to be honest it was more for the movie mm -hmm. it was good enough to have those navy guys you know in the story right, and right. at least to say okay there's enough of those guys in the same area over a period of time even the most recent was 2019 oh I wow think. okay the uss kid i believe yeah yeah and so so it's like okay let's go back to the same place and see what we can find and um and i was blown away <laughs> so what the technology itself where did you start with that what because you i mean you've done other projects where you knew what to bring but what was some other suggestions that you were like, oh, man, I didn't even think of that? Uh, what was that technology? Uh, how, well, how important was the technology, the new technology that you brought into this documentary? And where, where did the suggestions come from? Well, uh, it was uh, mostly the scientists, but we were so lucky because part of the team is this incredible guy, David Mason, and he's an uh, engineer and an inventor. So he's been working on creating all sorts of optical, you know, devices mm -hmm. and things like that. He works with different optical systems and all sorts of technology for, you know, big organizations. And so he already owned a lot of the equipment himself, which is which is a oh, blessing. Wow. We right. literally had we had hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment that we were able to to use now some yeah that is david mason my buddy <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad you had his picture um so we were so lucky from you know the stand the regular cameras to the night vision of course military grade night vision right, but right. a lot of people can can have that but then the FLIR cameras which are i mean 10 times more sensitive in the range of um of of infrared the infrared and so like each camera is maybe fifty thousand oh, dollars and wow. he had eight of them we had eight of them so this is just from the optical point of view then there is all sorts of like i said spectrum analyzers and things like that radiation detect detections as well so that he already had which is insane how lucky we were i purchased uh, another set that that set is the one that captured the wormhole thing by the way oh really uh, okay yeah okay. yeah yeah uh, so so but uh anyway with all of this plus he had inventions uh in the movie i don't know if you got to that part in the movie a little but bit. yes i saw yeah, where he started yeah, yeah. yes bringing his invention yeah. in yeah great stuff like i've never seen anything like this before where you would um it's kind of a photo diode like that's inside the binoculars mm -hmm. and then you you which what happens is that as you are observing an object in the sky um that device picks up the light pattern coming off of the object or star or whatever it right. is. And you literally, it converts it into sound. So you end up see, uh, hearing what you're seeing. Mm. <laughs> and the purpose of that, so, so for example, in the movie, so if you would look at a star, you would hear the light, the, the light being emitted by that star. If you look at another you star, hear it's it? different. Hear it. Wow. So the idea, yeah. So so there, you, people will see that, will hear that in, in the film, and we'll see how that works. So the idea of this is to kind of convert into a signal, which is a sound signal, that can potentially tell, give us patterns. Like this could be a communication. I mean, not the star, right? But if it's a UFO, um, <clears throat> it could be a pattern that we could detect. That it will tell us a lot about what this object is what is it you know the properties of this object and he had a technology where you can send it right back to them like so it's kind of like a communication device so i mean we had very very cutting edge stuff you know so uh with all of this uh yeah i mean it's just it's just mind-blowing not only that no one's like never done anything like this before but um the type of technology we had and how much we came back with the number the amount of data is is literally i mean it's mind-blowing so this is groundbreaking for 
the future of uh, UFO, paranormal, extra, extraterrestrial, um, um, I, I guess, hunting. <laughs> yes, hundred yeah. percent. No one, did, you know, there is no government, uh, of course not, <laughs> doing anything right. like this. There's no scientific uh, group doing that. There are no UFO researchers doing that. At that scale, I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, researchers doing all right. sorts of uh, observations and things like that. At that scale, no one. And uh, so, and we did this over five days. Five days. So, wow. Five days. So in five days, we collected the things that are in the movie that people will see in the movie. You know, right. I picked right. the best, most striking right. anomalies, right. of course. But we ended up with hundreds of hours of data that the scientists are still going through. So think about this. If we are civilians going to this one area with our equipment for five days and we have so much data, I mean, what do you think the government has, you know, with the satellites, the radar systems mm -hmm. they have, you know, all pointing at the sky, right. uh, you know, 24 seven. Come on, don't tell me they don't have data. Well, that's that's what I was going to ask, because, you know, people that go out for years and years with technology and they're like, I don't we barely see anything, which do you think, too, that sometimes people aren't telling the truth such as the government mm -hmm. and do you feel like sometimes extraterrestrials might be helping the cause meaning like we're going to expose or allow our being seen for maybe better good i don't know what what is your thoughts on that because in five days to get all get some major information i mean that's that's pretty impressive I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> because, yeah, because, you know, uh, yeah. So so it's actually several things. You know, one, sometimes people are using the wrong instruments or not long right. enough or they don't know how to study the data. Some of the things that we captured, it's you can't see in the naked eye. Right. I mean, you have to have the infrared or you have to have or, or you have to kind of go through the, the frame, like frame by frame to mm -hmm. capture something, because some of it is like, a boop, you know, um, and so a lot of people will miss that. So there's that. However, however, at the same time, especially as we were, you know, I financed the whole thing. I had a couple of small sponsors for some parts of the movie, small right. part. But so as we're going along, uh, you know, like kind of in the production, right? I'm thinking, oh my God, five days? Like, what if nothing happens? <laughs> right, that's what I'd be like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm like paying the bills and everything. And I'm like, so I believe in this stuff. I've had my own experiences being communicated. I understand how this could be possible that we are antennas, we are communicating, we're receiving messages. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had so many experiences that I know it's right. real. Uh, but going into this production, nobody on the team was into it. Like I said, it was science, nuts and bolts. Don't even mention the C word consciousness, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So like, I was in like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So I was in my hotel room, you know, going, okay, guys, like, give me something, <laughs> you know, something significant because this is a big deal it's a big production so and somehow i knew it was going to be july 14th hmm. so we set up the expedition to be from the 12th to the 16th and sure enough the first uh, sighting was on the 14th so i was uh... like okay that's nice keep it coming keep it coming <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then so yeah i really and we ended up with stuff so much beyond my expectation and so to answer your question i really think we were helped i really yeah. think so because uh like you said we could have come back empty-handed the team was the first time they had never worked together before we had all kinds of problems like power outages really? you know things oh yeah 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 things going offline or you know things not making any sense the police kept showing up uh telling us what are you guys doing and you know <laughs> i mean the neighbors were freaking out they wanted to shut us down like we had all sorts of things that right. could have totally 
um, made the production, you know, we could have come back empty handed. And, and so I know there was some sort of support there for sure. And I think, you know, for people still out there that, you know, there's a lot of people that are, were on your cast and crew that, you know, they wouldn't want to be a part of something that, that made anything up. Like this is yeah. their, rep their, this is their reputation also. And so I think, you know, that's a testament to you to being able to bring these people together. I mean, I think from the quality of stuff you've put out before and your integrity you put into your stuff, I think is probably what really brought these people together. And then that's why I think sometimes maybe the extraterrestrials, the people on the other side of our dimension that know that you're doing this not for a selfish, selfish reason, but for to bring hopefully our two worlds together. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. And in fact, that's what, what was um, making the scientists very nervous. You know, they were so concerned about their reputation, mm -hmm, you know, right. like online. So that's why they wanted to stay very science based and very nuts and bolts. And right. for the, just for people who are listening, who haven't seen the <clears> film, uh, none of the footage was changed in any way or mm -hmm. enhanced in any way. I mean, of course, when we zoom in, we say zoom, but that's we're not changing any of the pixels. So it's like the right. raw footage as we captured it. And it, it's exactly for what you just said. So um, it is just and to be honest, if we had not captured anything, I wasn't going to make a film. I mean, <laughs> right. like, right. What, what am I going to go and show like three balls of light and nothing? I mean, right. So I was so unless it was true, true data, real stuff, um, I wasn't going to I would have, you know, kind of done maybe extended the time to right. maybe capture or try another location or whatever but i wouldn't have put out a movie if right. i if it was going to be fake i mean it's my reputation too right not just the scientist and i that, that's why i said it's you know a lot of people you know you, you hear about these films that they're doing it just for you know to get a reaction or whatever but i've known caroline for a while and uh i've only saw great quality in your work and integrity so uh that's why i'm like this this definitely has some validity to it um and also making these films i mean even myself interviewing people like you you know i started i can't believe eight and a half years ago truth be told and my mindset has changed so much mm -hmm from interviewing people. I, you know, I don't necessarily get out in the field. I wish I could as more than, than some. Um, but, but my mindset and my thoughts on this subject have changed over the years. And it's, you know, what is your mindset and your, in your thoughts changed, you know, just doing this film, this documentary, what, is there anything that's maybe, I know it doesn't take away from your your theories, but what is what has it changed in in like enhancing what your your thoughts are? Oh, it enhanced my my theories. I mean, big time. Uh, in fact, just a little side note, I called the movie A Tear in the Sky two two years ago. In other words, when we were still in pre production. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I had no idea what you know, but. It's because of my theories. Uh, I think you've heard me talk about the planetary grid, the mm -hmm. patterning of space time, right. how we're literally inside a network, a network of geometric network, a grid within a grid within a grid, and where all this geometry intersects, the vertex points are kind of like zero points, like miniature wormholes. Right. And right. and this is where it's kind of like if you look at the magnetic field of around the planet, there are certain places where the magnetic field is so concentrated. It's like it warps mm -hmm. and this warping uh, also um, creates something maybe like light bending or something like that, where you see something, but then you don't see it. And so. By the way, uh, the warping is, is not, it's also very scientific. So, but I believe that there are those areas already in our space above us and below us. 
And so I am not interested in just the UFOs and the technology. Like, ooh, you know, is it us? Is it that? I mean, there's right, that. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I'm interested in the mechanics of the universe. Like, what is behind the scenes that's allowing such a technology to exist? That's allowing space travel in this way. That's making it that we see something and then we don't. I'm trying to understand the mechanics of the universe. And so that's why my focus was on the wormhole itself. The, right. you know, so I called it a tear. And I knew that whatever UFOs were going to find, hopefully, <laughs> had something to do with the tear. And sure enough, the ending of the movie is insane. Mm. I mean, it's insane. Mm. William Shatner, you hear him have this reaction. Um, <laughs> It's literally, we're going to let the people watch the movie, but literally it's an opening and closing and physical object, actual physical measurable objects coming out of it. Oh my gosh. And I mean, we've heard a lot of, you know, off the coast of California, especially right off Malibu, that there's a lot of activity and in and out of water and stuff like that. But yeah, please watch the film. And I don't want to jump away from your film, A Tear in the Sky, but... Um, when we when we actually air this, so people, no surprise, we recorded this a couple weeks in advance. But you know, they just got a, a shot of the black hole in our uh, galaxy. What what do you think, as you know, a documentary maker, you know, working with scientists, uh, believer in you know other dimensions and extraterrestrials, how how significant is this? Um, black hole uh, picture and discovery in our galaxy? Well, first of all, the timing is so interesting. Isn't it? <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, what? You know, I mean, we're the first civilians again to go out and, and record something that look, again, we can't jump to conclusion and say right. we discovered a wormhole because, you know, whatever, you know. Right. <laughs> right. But they don't even know what a wormhole is. But but the idea, the theory of, of an opening or some sort of portal, something is very possible because of the warping, you know, mm -hmm. which is which is a scientific uh, actually concept. So I just find it fascinating that you know the government also is is doing like there's the hearing coming up mm -hmm. and then they're talking about alien abductions you know in this last report and coming in contact with um with an alien craft and and all these crazy things and we are kind of putting out this information about wormholes and measurable things coming and now you see this from nasa you know the the, the black hole I mean, I'm just like kind of in general, like what's going on here? Is this mm -hmm. kind of a turning point in our society where we are really starting to understand how we are connected to the universe and how the universe, how there are, speaking of mechanics of the universe, these black holes and these wormholes are our entry and exit way, if you will, between us and other planets and other galaxies mm -hmm. as well, because that was like right at the center of the galaxy. So I feel like that's what we're being prepared and that's what we're, we're observing right now, because it's kind of coming from all these different angles. What do you think? No, I, I think it's significant in a lot of ways because, you know, we, we talked about a lot of black holes and we talked about but we don't really get an opportunity to, to get a picture of them, especially in our own galaxies. And I think that what with the way the world is right now, wars, disease, you know, our human beings are completely divided, you know, good, evil, bad, whatever you want, how you want to classify it. I, I feel that that, the exposure of UFOs are definitely, well, put it this way. When Ronald Reagan said, when something outside of our galaxy or our universe pretty much attacks us, we're going to be one world, not divided. So I think that, you know, not saying that they're going to attack, attack us, but I think that humans definitely were, are going to have to have some kind of common interest in what's out 
in our universe that could affect us, you know, asteroids, um, the sun, solar flares. I mean, many different types of things that could destroy our planet very easily. And we're fighting over, you know, that land is mine and yours, not this, my religion, this and da da da. Um, so I think, you know, when, when we find, when we find stuff like these black holes, it brings the world together in some ways if they, or at least it should to find who, who we are, where we came from, what is next after this life. So yeah, I think it's very significant. Yeah, because now everybody's looking at the sky at the same time. It's yeah. like we have a common goal. Yeah. And and then when you think about the mysteries of these black holes and wormholes, and again, it's like, wait, mm -hmm. we are part of a much, much, much bigger mm -hmm. uh, citizenship, you know, of, of life, you know, right. so it expands your your awareness and your consciousness. So definitely it's, it's so interesting how it's all seems to be uh, synchronized that way, that, the timing of it. And how, how has people responded so far to your documentary? Amazing. Actually, I'm very surprised. We had, I don't know how many reviews, a ton of reviews so far. Um, I mean, 99% positive. There's, there was only like one really bad. There's always that one person. <laughs> there's always, always yeah, there's one. Always some, yeah. <laughs> but usually it's like half, half or something. This right. one, we're very surprised. Like literally most of them are extremely positive and that's, mainstream which is great you mm -hmm. know because uh, it means that the mainstream uh, looking at the subject uh, is not sensationalized right. you know they're taking it seriously and also from a filmmaking point of view they're judging the film as a um, you know from an artistic point of view as well and the content so that's been great um we were number two on the itunes uh, chart on the first day of release uh, we're still awesome. in the top four. So, you know, it keeps fluctuating, but uh, top four since the first day of release, nonstop, wow. or the top 10, 10 top eight, an uh, Apple TV of all documentaries. Wow. Uh, yes. And so, and uh, Amazon is doing very well. Uh, so I think people are liking it, but uh, we just have to keep pushing. Like we have to keep telling the world about it um yeah. and what i like about it is that it's across the board it's not just for ufo people right. I, right I think ufo people will be happy to see this different fresh approach mm -hmm. uh which is scientific they'll be interested to see the data and they'll be interested to see the different types of thing that we captured you know like mm -hmm. so it's not because usually you see orbs or you see those right. triangles right. or whatever but you don't see stuff raining down i don't i've never seen anything like this and you certainly don't see things opening and closing in the sky wow so so i think the ufo folks will will love that part um and then of course the, those who are into just consciousness and awareness i mean we just totally opened the doorway i think so i'm very very hopeful for this film oh I, i'm sure it's going to continue to do well like you said the technology alone where nobody else has used something like this. So I, I think this documentary is going to be relevant for quite a while. Um, and also it sounds like a stop sign, you know, it's like close, open, close. It's like, <laughs> it's like, all right, come through. All right, stop. All right, come through. Yeah. Um, did, and did you, did, do these wormholes, do you feel, and I know, you know, time's getting short, but do you feel that, this is a, a portal or a wormhole to for all dimensions or do you feel that you know there's one one particular species or or craft coming through this particular hole or is it multiple different types of of uh ships yeah I love your questions. So what happens is uh, when I talked about the grid, you know, I said the mm -hmm. grid within a yeah. grid within a grid, it's like three grids. So every point is not exactly the same. So mm -hmm. it's almost like a high highway, highway systems, right. you know, some highways can get you that far and other highways can get you from state to state. Right, right, right. You know, and, and some, some highways can get you across the entire country. 
So it's a little bit like that. Some mm -hmm. points are more kind of local. So maybe it's from a close by planetary system, so to speak. Right. And other points within our space um, take, take <laughs> us directly uh, outside the galaxy. Wow. How about that? Wow. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> yeah. So that's why there are many uh, points around the planet. People uh, think about it in terms of ley lines, right. you know, ley going lines, in right. certain like when you're standing somewhere, your equipment shuts off, the you know, the power goes out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, cars break down, uh, but it's, that's just on like on the street level. But, you know, there's stuff above us and below us. And um, and the effect is is more powerful in certain areas, not all of these points are exactly the same. And so that's the reason why it's because each highway, each point gets you to a different highway. And what the question of, or the, the statement of go, uh, below us. Yes. <laughs> all right, we're, 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 we've been talking a lot about above us out in space. What is the below us? Yeah. So middle you know, earth. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's a it's a grid system and it's 3D. It's not 2D. It's not, right. We don't it's not flat. And so it starts at the center of the planet and it goes out. It's the vector equilibrium actually. It's and it goes out in geom in geometric hmm. forms out this way. Right. So therefore, if we're you know if the planet is here, it goes out from the center to the surface to above the surface. And so, so we're looking up to the sky or right under our feet, but there's, it started at the center of the planet. So there's stuff below us as well. Mm. And these are the points, you know, where we see USOs, you know, the, the UFOs that are underwater. Right, right. Um, and, th and that's where, that's why it happens because those hub, those nodes, uh, entry and exit points are actually underwater underneath. <sighs> That is awesome. Well, one of these days, when you shoot another one, in which I'm sure you will, I want to just come watch. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? That it's, sounds it's amazing. Too. Are you planning on anything else? Or are you just kind of relaxing and, and enjoying this finished product? Oh, my God. I have so many ideas, you know. And yeah. now the film has been out there for a little bit, just a week or something like that it's going to be i haven't had and i know that there's quite a few scientists who have seen it who weren't in the film they're like I'm I, do in it. fact i'm yeah i'm <laughs> calling i'm talking to a couple actually also and i haven't had anybody tell me oh well we know what this is this is a <laughs> whatever some atmospheric blah, right. blah blah you know something or this is the you know i mean nothing nothing no one has any explanation it's like mind-blowing mm. and so so i'm kind of right now focused on what's going to happen with this data with this information and trying to put it out there as much as i can you know so we right. really need that sort of you know um help spread that information beyond the film the science right. you know that right. we the things we discovered uh but my mind is like going like crazy i already have like three different project ideas wow one of, yeah because one of which wait if we did that in five days then should i go back and do it again or should you know so we right. have all these different options and we learn so much because it was the first time and so now we have we know even better how to deal with the amount of data, how to position the equipment, how to get even different types of equipment. You know, we're even right. better than last time. So we're we're already ready to go, to be honest. Wow. Well, I, I'm excited and I can't wait to finish the, the rest of it and and, of course, help you promote this as much as I can. And uh, we we're always excited when. Uh, Caroline Corey says, I have a new project. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're, I have something else. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And like I said, just the production value alone is just amazing because a lot of these, you know, documentaries are so they're they're good. But the production values, you know, an iPhone and this and that. And you're like, it's it's good. But but this is like, wow, like very professional and uh, the content and the quality of 
cast and crew it's just amazing so well how do people i know we told us a second ago but how do people again watch it and and please share it share it with your friends yeah, for sure. So the best way is to get it on Amazon or iTunes. Uh, but for the people who don't have Amazon, they can just go to the website, etereinthesky.com, and they'll see, uh, you know, a thing watch now, and they'll see all the other platforms that are available. So etereinthesky.com. Awesome. Well, Caroline, thank you so much for, again, being on our show. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. And, you know, like I said, because this is a lot of effort and a lot of work, if people like it, if you like it, you know, don't forget to leave a review and uh, share it with your friends because the more we put it out there, the more we have uh, the ability to to produce more important work like this. Amen to that. And uh, we want to thank uh, Caroline Corey, a tear in the sky dot com. And uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in and asking questions. And if you know, since we pre-recorded this, if you have questions, please go to the review or go to her social media and ask questions uh, to Caroline. I'm sure she would try to re respond to that. I don't want to put her on the spot, but uh, please uh, watch us every Friday right here uh, at three o'clock on our YouTube channel. Uh, Mondays, um, you have Robert Hensley at three o'clock, a Minuteman report. And then on Wednesdays, Bonnie Burkard uh, doing uh, Truth Be Told Transformation. And of course, me every Friday. So until next time, I'm Tony Sweet for Truth Be Told. Have a good weekend and we'll talk to you next week. This has been another episode of Truth Be Told. Thank you so much for watching. Recorded live at UBN Go Studios in Burbank, California. Join us on social media. Facebook, Truth Be Told Radio. Instagram, Truth Be Told Paranormal. Go to Truth Be Told Worldwide for more information on upcoming shows.